Okay, what we're doing here is we're laying out a no-freeze seedling house. It could be used as a greenhouse uh, to a small extent, but mostly to raise seedlings. I've got holes bored in the ground here along the length of it on the uphill side uh, to give me the depth to stone. I want to see where the bedrock is here. Make sure i got enough depth to dig the hole where I want it. We are... Uh, so we, we put those along the line. Now we're going to line it up and we're going to mark the an extent of the excavation, which is only going to be uh, about four feet wide uh, by 64 feet long in this case and down to three feet. That would give us a place with a walkout and we can just walk into this and still stand with the where the, where the structure is only four feet out of the ground. And uh, we're going to build it with a line of barrels filled with gravel and sand along the back uh, with a concrete bond beam, we'll call it, poured along the top of those barrels. And then we're going to arch with steel out of it. It will arch over with plastic, uh, polycarbonate, down to a concrete footing on the ground on the other side. And uh, that will give us a structure to put our glazing on. There will be steel rebar coming here with foam put around it, poly, uh, uh, poly foam, that will give structure to the, to the building. And it's just that simple. It's quite inexpensive. And because it'll have a high mass with a, with a versus the glazing area and the airspace, it shouldn't freeze even in our cool winters here at well, well, well below zero uh, for a couple of weeks. So we'll see how so it goes. We're marking the dig lines for this seedling house. We've got the width of four foot wide down through here, four foot four actually. We'll make it just a pinch wider. So we know where to dig that depth down into the ground without disturbing the soil on the sides. So we'll have a backhoe in here tomorrow to do that. In this case, we've got to have a ramp to get out. We're fortunate we have a downhill position, so we can run a, run a, a, a ramp down here or a, a, a access to this space until it comes out as low as the floor would be, which means the water will drain away and nothing will drain into it. If we had to come up with steps or a steep ramp, because it was flat, then we would have to put a ridge around it so water wouldn't flow down inside and snow melt in that. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a laser level and we're going to shoot the depth of this trench, which is going to be the walkway in our greenhouse and a place to put some barrels actually on the inside with some soil for vermiculture and plants. Uh, but it's not level. We know it's not level and it doesn't have to be level. In the building industry, uh, everything is done on a dimensional basis with standardized size, standard size materials, such as four by eight sheets of plywood, uh, two by four, eight foot long. Uh, ceilings are typically eight feet, although they might be customized at different heights. So everything has to fit square and plumb. It has to be level and it has to be plumb. We don't have to do that because nothing we're using here is standardized materials. It hasn't got a shape we have to conform to. It's all flexible, okay? And so it doesn't matter that our that our ceiling house goes along the ground like this and curved a little bit. Even even far straight is concerned. We could actually made it more curved this way, although we are using four by eight sheets of polycarbonate for glazing that will curve over the front, uh, only four foot at a time, so it can change elevation. Uh, we can't, if we bend the building, then the polycarbonate won't fit by four by eight sheets to leave a space. So we get it straight. And there's ways of doing it otherwise. If you want to spend more money on polycarbonate, we're trying to keep the cost down. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is just check the grade here uh, for the bottom of our dig. And we're going to let the ground be our elevation for the building. So the building may sit kind of like this instead of perfectly level. And it's okay. You know, or it may sit like this a little bit. I'm exaggerating. And it's okay. It doesn't affect it. So we can have that flexibility on building. Extremely less expensive when we have that flexibility. And uh, in, in, in design and, and extremely less, uh, extremely more cost effective. So, so you don't mind if the glazing is not level? Well, it's only four foot at a time that needs to be a level. So in a four foot increment, it's close. And they don't have to perfectly match because the glazing comes together like this when it curves around. 
and it can be off a little bit because we have three pieces of steel rebar that come from just behind the glazing up to the top uh, that we spray foam onto and the foam then fills any gap where these aren't perfect and it creates a beam about this big literally about this big right there behind that joint on the glazing and where the steel is so the steel is encased in the foam that creates a structural strength to it now instead of just wobbly little pieces of steel it's got some body around it so it's plenty strong enough to hold snow loads in that for this we're not going to climb on it it's going to shed snow it doesn't need to have the 60 pound snow load that, that this area in colorado has for instance uh, it's just way more flexible in design